Hey, good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, this is Guillermo Sabatier. Um, I am the director of international services for HSI and the host for today's show, Perspectives on Energy. Uh, today, I have no guests. I'm doing a solo show again, and, and uh, I'm going, with, going to be talking about NERC system operator certification. Uh, some of the things that changed in the last couple of years. So it's been a while since I've delivered this training. I've been doing it. I've been doing about three sessions uh, in the last couple of months. So it's been rather interesting. Um, been helping some of the new uh, oper system operator candidates get ready for their NERC certification certification exam. And just wanted to talk about some of the different things that, that I've noticed. Uh, some of the different types of candidates that that I've seen recently and how the exam itself has changed so one other thing i want to point out was that it's rather interesting how 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 exams have changed in this, in this regard so i want to make sure we have that uh this little discussion about that and kind of show how how things are looking over the next slide so uh, since the last few years and how we're looking going forward right? so what is a NERC uh system operator certification right? so that is a um Think of it as a credential to be able to operate the bulk electric system, to actually be a grid operator. Anything having to do with 100 kilovolts or above and operating that type of thing in 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 a, in, a, in the power grid, that's something that is required to have. Uh, there's three, there's several types of different certifications. There's a reliability coordinator certification that allows you to do any one of those jobs in, in that field. Then there's a, a transmission operator certification, which has a list less requirements to it and there's a few others as well like a bit which is a balancing interchange and a transmission and there's one that has balancing interchange so uh one of the things that the uh the one i always kind of encourage people to take as far as an exam goes is the rc system operator certification um, namely because it even though it's 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 the longest exam it has uh it has the most questions right it, it tends to cover these uh subject areas in not so much depth and detail right all the other ones because they kind of go into more depth into the particular knowledge areas so one of the things that that NERC has been has been doing over the last few years and that hasn't changed much is the fact that they they have the exam uh, has a certain number of questions. You have a passing score, of course, and then within those number of questions, they have a certain number of uh, test uh, pilot questions that are not uh, they're not graded, but you don't know which those are. So you have to take that examination and answer those questions as best you can. And then they they will they will determine whether those questions are worthy of the next batch of uh, questions in the test bank, right? So one of the things that's interesting about this is that, um, of course, the RC certification has also the highest number of uh, continuing education hour requirements that's uh, 200 uh, they have a requirement of 200 continuing education hours ceh's over a three-year period the top i believe or in the and the well the to has a lot less like 140 and i think the uh, bi bit has uh, i think it's 160 hours so um naturally there there's there's a lot less burdensome for the operator to actually take that exam and maintain that credential Problem is that they can't go do any function that requires, for example, balancing knowledge or interchange knowledge or even reliability coordinator knowledge. They will be they will be limited to that role uh, that they're certified for. So it's not unheard of for an operator who took an exam to go ahead and retest later for for an upgrade, right? And and uh, try to work on a promotion or some sort of thing like that. But either way, one of the things I noticed is that if you want to have a lot more career opportunities as an operator, usually you might want to go for the RC exam certification. Usually the exam questions are pretty much all the same uh, and they are just more of them, but they're not in so much in depth, right? Um, we here at HSI, we uh, we uh, have been doing exam preparation training for that exam for a while, even before we were we became a part of HSI as SOS. We were doing it for like over a decade or more. Uh, when I first got certified, I actually took that exam uh, with the help of SOS, I, I did well. I passed it. That was a long time ago. Now, I'm probably going to take it again. Just let mine expire and, and take it uh, in the next couple of years. But uh, one of the interesting things I noticed is that the exam has changed dramatically as far as what they're asking in there. One of the things I've noticed is that the um, the questions are no longer the recall type questions or like they used to be. They still have a few, but now the questions are more 
sort of a uh, situational solve solve the current scenario type of thing, or they give you a scenario and ask you what would you do in a scenario? What's the best course of action in the scenario? And a lot of times they're they're basically really testing your knowledge, right, and making sure you know the the concepts of what you're doing. Um, unfortunately, right now it's in, over the last four or five years there has been quite a knowledge drain in this field. A lot of retirements, a lot of people have moved on, and uh, but mostly retirements, right? And and what has happened is that they um, coupled with the fact that the exam was uh, they raised a cut score, right? Meaning that they raised the, the the minimum passing score for the exam. And one of the things that we're noticing as well is that there's there's a direct correlation, of course, on the, the cut score cut cut a certain percentage of people out of the bottom. But if you were you were barely passing with the cut score so low, I think one of the reasons that um, that that was so dramatic uh, dramatically increased the the number of people that were failing probably had to do with the fact that they weren't quite grasping the uh, the core concepts and, and instead they were trying to memorize uh, sample test questions. Um, so. So what also I think attributed to that as well is the fact that a lot of the new applicants to this career field are not really coming from the uh, from the industry exactly right they're coming from other fields and and you know we're, we're glad they're given the opportunity and we're, we're, we're very happy and we welcome them here but at the same time they, a lot of times they they don't have they don't have a lot, a lot of this basic skills related to to the uh, electric utility industry. So oftentimes they, they they may struggle with some of the concepts, you know, whether it's voltage or current or or impedance, what difference between the, the resistance and line reactance and that sort of thing, and the, and some of the math that goes behind that. Uh, fortunately for them, and fortunately for us, we we offer a pretty solid uh, NERC test prep uh, program. So we have the uh, NERC exam test prep. So this this is you can go to this website, and we in here have the. Uh, the various options, right? You have an online uh, online test prep training, which will get you through all you know all the different knowledge areas, give you practice exams, uh, teach you the concepts as well, and uh, pretty much prep prep you for the exam, right? In this case, and in most cases, uh, most people pretty much is all they need. This week, however, I am actually delivering the in person uh, three and a half day uh, three and a half day in person uh, instructor led course which is like a final final prep before they take their exam in fact uh, we end the uh, we end the exam uh, we end the class on Wednesday on um, tomorrow afternoon on, and uh, well on on the third on the fourth day we ended at at noon half day and somebody has already scheduled their exam for that afternoon so they're not wasting any time so they they basically have gone through all the online modules they're They've done a lot of the, the uh, sample test questions, and then now they're pretty much ready to answer any final doubts they have. And that's where this uh, instructor-led uh, class comes into effect, which is one thing I've been helping deliver these last couple of weeks. Um, pretty confident. I think that most of them will pass. I mean, based on the questions they've asked me, I think they'll do a good job. Uh, from uh, so that's one example. Also, we have another another aspect of our of what we do is we do um, Friday every Friday we have a one and a half two hour session where we where we do some mentoring online, and it's live. It's also instructor led, and uh, in that case we help them pass. Uh, well, we help them answer some some questions they have on the either the modules or some of the sample test questions. Right? So usually that that ends up you know uh, it's it's our, our pass rate is pretty good when it comes to folks that have gone through our program. But overall, right now, the uh, the pass rate for the exam as of this year is 60, yeah, just almost 63%. Last year, it was 59%. So it's gotten a little better, but but they, they did make that they cut, they raised the cut score a couple of years ago. So that, that made matters uh, really, really challenging for some of these applicants, right? And um, so there are some ideas regarding uh, maybe having them uh, go through some kind of like uh prerequisite training before they start some of these uh, nurse certification modules on, or at least get them through, through the better foundation, right? So before they start, uh, these all have a cost to them. There, there's a price for the for the online training. There's a price for the um, instructor-led training. And if you're already signed up to either one of those, the, the online, the um, Friday mentoring sessions are, are, are already included in one of those prices. So you're welcome to attend as often as you want. Right? So usually, you know, we, we have pretty good feedback on that. So um, one of the things that I think uh, is, 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 is um, 
not concerning, but but I've noticed a trend is is that the fact that there it's getting harder and harder to find personnel from within the in, from within the industry, right? That that are that are coming up to become system operators. It's just a matter of uh, the knowledge drain and just not having the available personnel. Uh, in the past, what I would notice is usually they would they would uh, recruit from within. It's usually f uh, personnel that were engineers in the field, engineers or some in uh, in in either transmission planning or those sorts of jobs. Uh, usually, they would also recruit from the bargaining unit side, which is folks that are on the union. IBEW, they would hire us from either substation electricians, or they would hire personnel from the power plants. Those were those, and sometimes even transmission operations personnel. So those were usually usually really ideal candidates, right, to be able to fill these roles. They most of them had a pretty solid understanding of power, power systems, and pretty much how the power system works. And and we even have some success with uh, with hiring personnel from the distribution side. Which and and even the distribution control center operators are also did a pretty good job when they went came over to work for the transmission or the bulk electric system operation side. So um, for the most part, that was pretty successful. We didn't have a lot of issues. Uh, a lot of them understood uh, power line flows. A lot of them understood voltage support. And a lot of them understood you know uh, issues with with reliability. But but when we're trying to help uh, personnel that that came from other industries. Um, Somewhat related. I mean, some 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 of them came from the energy industries, but usually that has to do with either uh, gas or even utilities. When it comes to water, they 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 have a little bit harder time, right, getting through some of this training. And uh, unless they're part of a larger program that that puts them through a, a whole bigger uh, systematic approach, where they're getting a lot of these like basic skills taught. I mean, if they're coming in from the street and trying to pass the exam by taking this uh, nerd test prep program. Um, they have a hard time, but I think we do a pretty good job of preparing them, right? So, so that's one of the things that, that I think we're, we're pretty happy about. So, um, that, yeah, and and eventually, I think what what takes place as well is that um, one thing I've seen, right, in in these uh, in person training sessions is that, uh, yeah, no, nothing beats the whole in person face to face training. Uh, I know a lot of us have decided to go with with the online or even the live instructor led online training. But the the account of the type of feedback you get from in person, the type of teamwork you get, the type of like interaction you're getting, not just with the instructor like myself, but also the interaction you're getting with the other participants in class is is, is really, really, really impactful, and significant. And I think it makes a really huge difference when it comes to uh, better preparing for this exam. Uh, today, for example, there was a case where where uh, uh, there was a, there was a, an exam question that even stumped me a little bit, right? Um, and and I was trying to have to stay through it, but uh, one one of the students in class kind of figured it out, and 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 then I and then it kind of reminded me of, of something that I was thinking about, and sure enough, that's the way he solved the problem. So then once he did that, there everybody else in the class kind of was illuminated immediately, in the sense that that's a pretty tough question, but they were able to do it, and it had to do with uh, line outages and line outage distribution factors and. Uh, and how that gets redistributed on other tra other transmission lines, right? So it was a really challenging question, but it's pretty simple when you, when you think back now. But if you're on an exam and you kind of can't figure it out, you know, you don't have a lot of time. If they give you three hours to answer, I think it's 120 questions, but the reality is that, you know, you're, you're not going to spend a lot of time in one question that you're having trouble with. So you'll mark it and come back to it later. So um, when... So, so that, that's something that we're constantly evolving in our program, right? So we're, we're applying, uh, if anybody remembers exam questions, you know, from the NERC exam, then we go ahead and kind of like update our materials based on that and uh, keep it up to date, up to date with uh, the latest examples of what they've, um, what they've seen on the exam, right? So hopefully that gets everybody ready. And uh, we've had quite a few, great interaction in the last few weeks when I've had these courses. So... Um, I think we're our, our program has improved a great deal to accommodate some of these newer applicants that are coming from different different uh, industries altogether. Right? So uh, it's been an interesting change. It's been a little bit of a challenge, but 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 I think we've done a pretty good job in in, in meeting that and uh, getting them better prepared to start our training to to then take a better advantage of our training and how that operates. So, so uh, the other thing that I wanted to bring up finally is the fact that. Um, that 
this knowledge train isn't going to isn't going to stop. Right? We're, we're looking at a. Uh, uh, potentially uh, seeing a lot more retirements happen over the next three to four years. And uh, one thing that's, that concerns the industry quite a bit is the fact that, you know, with this knowledge ring, you're losing a lot of experience, you're losing a lot of uh, very, very seasoned operators. So the problem is now it's it's, it's now going out and finding uh, new 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 operators to, to, to just to certify and train. And uh from what I see now, it's it's becoming pretty difficult already, right? If you if you're having to find personnel that, that are not even in the industry to fill these job roles, it's going to be even more difficult after that. And then, of course, couple that with the fact that there will be more more competition for these um, highly skilled jobs. For example, uh, there's going to be a short a um, shortage of engineers in the next few years. Uh, so they're saying somewhat over over the next five years, over five million un I mean, I'm sorry, over one million unfilled role jo job roles for engineers. So eventually, there's going to be recruiting and poaching from the, not just within our industry, but across. The, they're going to take engineers from our industry to many other industries, right? Usually, uh, the electric utility industry is 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 has quite a complement of engineers working for it. So if you if you start to see that change happen already, and you'll see, for example, um, you're seeing it now, right? Uh, the, uh, a lot of engineers are just being made some, some pretty, pretty attractive offers to, to leave the utility industry and go work for other industries. I mean, they may be related industries, but the fact that they're leaving it, and sure enough, you know, that they're, you're gonna see a lot of movement in that in that, in that that arena. So what's to say, you know, the, the uh, the turnover its situation might get a lot more serious at that time so that's one of the concerns that i think uh, i share with a lot of the a lot of the professionals in our industry and leadership as well uh the other thing that we're concerning concerned with also is the fact that um as as these retirements come up uh a lot of them are retiring even even earlier so uh, yeah, given during the whole pandemic situation, uh, a lot of personnel opted just to retire two or three years earlier than they normally would have. Uh, and, and that was an example of what happened, right? So um, so that's something that that, that uh, there's a, a few solutions that they're thinking about in that regard. I mean, I, I had a doctor on one of my shows previously that we discussed the idea of uh, health optimization to keep, you know, that that workforce working and, 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 and engage a little longer, right? Um, that was one solution. That was Dr. Rudolph Everwine. I had him on there a few months ago. Another solution, of course, is um, is uh, changing the way we uh, we train um, and also changing the way we hire. So several different things that are looking at. Uh, one example of that would be, for example, it's 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 hiring earlier out of college and doing some uh, more more applied internships. So that would be a solution that will be looked at. Because because if the industry is having trouble with with uh, a shortage of engineers, or the universities is having trouble with uh, graduation rates of engineers, and they're also having trouble with enrollment, uh, not a lot of people are, are 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 getting into engineering school, and, and even fewer people are graduating with engineering degrees. So that's going to present itself, you know, in, in some time. So. So, but but um, as we Im deal with the immediate need of uh, certifying system operators. Um, I'm very happy to report that here we at HSI are offering a pretty a pretty solid, strong program to give everybody a good uh, NERC certification preparations uh, system where they can either do online training, they can do um, a three and a half day live instructor led course. They even have an on, a live online version of that course also with instructors. And they also offer, of course, a uh, weekly mentoring. So usually with that, it's a pretty solid uh, foundation and approach to be able to prepare for this nurse certification exam. So, so again, uh, thank you again for, uh, for taking a look at this video. And uh, for more information, please visit us at hsi.com, look at industrial skills, or just look up NERC uh, test prep training at HSI, and uh, it'll do, lead you right to that. And uh, maybe I'll see you in one of the classes, uh, uh, and I'll be one of your instructors. Again, this is Guillermo Sabatier, uh, Director of HSI's uh, International Services. And once again, thank you for joining us. Have a great afternoon.
you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.